Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course and this second module is about mathematics for deep learning. The previous videos in this module was about matrix operations and how you can do these matrix operations in Python. In today's video, I wanted to show you how these operations would happen in a GPU and how these would happen in a CPU mainly on a time basis like what's the time a particular operation would take on a GPU and what's the time it's taking on a CPU. So the main reason that I wanted to explain this is we know that deep learning uh, and the neural network training kind of happens very quickly in GPU when we compare it with the CPU right and the purpose or the reason for this is mainly the parallel processing power the GPU has so it has thousands of cores and this helps a particular task to kind of split in different cores and work. So let's say that we have a very large matrix and we have to do this multiplication with another matrix. So where a CPU has limited number of cores and it kind, kind of does this in a sequential way, it's going to take a long time to do that calculation. But when it comes to GPU, it has like uh, kind of like thousands of cores and what happens is like this task is kind of split up such that each core do a part of this calculation. And because of this, like uh, when you take a matrix multiplication, so all this kinds of happens in a parallel way where like each core is working on a specific set of calculations. So this helps the calculation to happen really quickly. So this we are going to see for ourselves by taking some examples of matrix, large matrices and do the calculation such as matrix addition, subtraction and multiplication on CPU as well as GPU and printing the time it's taking. So that will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So I'm working uh, this particular video on Google Collab, so you can even try that here. And if you want to try this on your Jupyter notebook in your local machine, so uh, you should probably have a NVIDIA GPU so that you can run those GP calculations. And the other thing that you need is like, you need the torch library. So the PyTorch library using which we are going to do these uh, calculations on the GPU. So in uh, Collab, so we have this library pre-installed. So that's like another added advantage. And the other thing is, let me disconnect this runtime. So we need to connect to a GPU runtime. So currently this is in a CPU runtime. So click on this runtime, go to change runtime, runtime type and here select T4 GPU. So currently this session only has a CPU, but we are going to use a T4 GPU, which is the Tesla GPU. And you can click on this connect or reconnect the thing that you are seeing here. And this would connect to a session that has a GPU environment. So Collab free version currently kind of gives us 15 gigabytes of RAM. That's like a, a good GPU that you can use. So first I'll run this pip list to show you uh, the torch library that's kind of pre-installed in Collab. And then we can just get started with the coding aspects. So we have this torch, right? So in torch, we have torch audios, vision and so on. But this is like the torch that's kind of installed here, 2.4.1, the CUDA version and so on, which is like, this is the GPU version. And torch also comes with a CPU version as well, but we are interested in this GPU. So we are using that. So we need two libraries here. So one is torch and the other one is time. So torch, we are going to use this to create matrices and do those calculations and time basically to measure the time that a particular process is going to take. So here let's create three functions, one for addition, subtraction and multiplication. And these functions would take matrices as input and do those calculations, find the time taken and so on, which is like pretty simple stuff. So here I'll say define, let's create a function and call this as matrix addition and say A comma B. So here we are going to do matrix addition both in CPU as well as GPU. So I'll say CPU matrix addition and let's create a variable and call this as start time and you can say time dot time. So this is going to kind of create this reference point for this time and then we can say result CPU is equal to a plus B and then in time is equal to time dot time. So CPU time is equal to in time minus start time. So basically we are marking the start of a process for this particular process and the end time for this process. So we have the start time the result CPU of A plus B and what's the end time. So then we are going to subtract it. So 
when we do that we get the time that this particular process has taken so this would be the start marker and this would be the uh, like stop marker so let's say that we are running a particular process that's going to take an hour so here we mark the time during the start of the process and the end of the process we are taking an hour so it would give let's say the time is 10 30 or something and after one hour the process is done and the time is uh, you know let's say 11 30 or something let's say and we subtract 10 30 11 30 from this 10 30 and then you would get this one hour as the time right so that's what we are basically doing so we would get that cpu time or basically the time that this process has taken and then we can print that by saying matrix addition on cpu so i can put this curly braces and use the variable so we are using this f strings to substitute some string within this curly braces so we can say cpu time which is going to give that in seconds so say dot uh, you know something like 3f or 4f so let's say that we want the output the time taken in seconds but with four floating point values seconds so this would measure the time it has taken and print the matrix addition on cpu and then i'll say gpu matrix addition so a underscore gpu is equal to a dot 2 CUDA and b gpu is equal to b dot to CUDA and then the, this thing is like pretty same so i can just copy the start time result this thing and i can just change this cpu to gpu so we have start time is equal to time is equal to time so let's put this as a result gpu so this is going to be a underscore gpu minus b underscore gpu i'll explain you the code once i'm done with this thing and then you have to say there is one more critical step here so i have to say torch dot cuda dot synchronize and this will be my gpu time so matrix addition on gpu this is the cpu time so let's try to understand this piece of code so first this uh, i think this is like clear so we have this matrix addition just a plus b so we will pass this matrices as the input for this function and then we have the start time end time calculating this time and then printing it but for gpu we need to move these matrices to gpu so this is the purpose of these two lines so we are moving this matrix which is currently on cpu to gpu using the, using this a dot two cuda and then we have this b underscore gpu where we are again moving this b matrix to uh, gpu and then we have the start time as time is equal to time result gpu is like again simple matrix addition and then we have this torch dot cuda dot synchronize so this is a very important thing because unlike cpu as i said earlier gpu kind of does things asynchronously that means like as the stuff are happening in parallel calculations are happening in parallel we want to make sure that all the processes process that that are happening in the gpu are completed so this torch.cuda.synchronize make sure that all the process running on the gpu for this addition is completed before executing the other lines of code so this is just uh, making sure that the process are done on the gpu and then we have this end time is equal to time dot time and gpu time is equal to end time minus start time and then we have this matrix addition on gpu which is again going to give us the seconds in four decimal points so i'll run this so now we can create some large matrix and pass this to this function and calculate the time taken so and the time difference is like kind of visible but it's not that much when it comes to addition and addition in cpu and gpu even subtraction won't take much time but when it's come to matrix multiplication we are going to see a very significant difference in the time so we will get get there but uh, let's let's see and then let's say n is equal to 10000 and i'm going to create a matrix as a is equal to torch dot randian uh, i'm putting this n comma n and similarly b is equal to torch dot random n n comma so here i'm creating a matrix of 10000 rows and 10000 columns so when we say torch.random it's going to as i said create uh, 
10 in 10,000 into 10,000 matrix with all random numbers. So we are creating this A and B. So I'll run this. And technically these are not matrix, but these are like tensors, but I'll, I'll say you why I'm using this tensor in a moment. And I can print this type of A and again, you can check the type of B. So it says torch.tensor, right? And if you check the shape of A dot shape, so it says shape is 10,000 comma 10,000. You can even print this A and it would say like there are like basically 10,000 uh, rows and 10,000 columns. But why it says tensor? Why it is not a matrix? So if you have already learned about this scalars, vector, matrices and tensors, you would know that tensor is a high dimensional data compared to a matrix. But in fact, all matrices are tensors or in fact, we call that as rank two tensor. So rank zero tensor is nothing but a scalar that means like it has like one value it doesn't have any different dimensions and all that and a vector you can call that as a rank one tensor so it has either one column or one row something like that a rank two tensor is basically a matrix that has two dimensional data in rows and columns so you can either call it as a matrix or a rank two tensor and rank three tensor rank four tensor are the ones that has like even more dimensions than a matrix so this is how a rank 3 tensor would look like where you have this uh, rows columns and, and you have like another set of values like this one so basically we can consider this rank 2 tensor as a matrix so that's why we are creating this tensors but as this is technically a two dimensional tensor or, or a, sorry rank 2 tensor this can be considered as a matrix and then we can pass this to the addition function and then we can get the values so let's see so we have a a is equal to 10,000. We have created this matrix with random values. And now I can just say uh, matrix addition. So the function that we have created and then pass this thing. So it's going to do the addition on CPU and then the addition on GPU. And then it's going to give us the time it has taken. So I'll run this. So the matrix addition on CPU took like 0 0.2635 seconds whereas matrix addition on gpu took only like 0 0.07 seconds which is like pretty uh, lesser compared to this right so 0 0.2 seconds and this is 0 0.07 seconds as i said this is not a large number but as the size of the matrix increases the time also may increase but again so we will see a visual difference when it comes to matrix multiplication so now let's work on matrix subtraction and then uh, matrix multiplication in the similar way so we can maybe use the same matrix as well you can also see the work that kind of happened on the ram and the gpu and things like that so now for addition i can sorry subtraction i can copy this thing and just like change a few things and i'll call this matrix subtraction a and b start time so this is going to be my matrix subtraction So this happens on CPU and this matrix subtraction is going to happen on GPU. So here I'll just replace this plus with minus. Here also we can do the same thing. Other things remain the same. So here we are doing this. The only change is we are moving this to the GPU and then using this CUDA and then using this torch CUDA dot synchronize and just instead of uh, addition, just call this as subtraction. Again, you can create some matrix with the same method. N is equal to 10,000 A and B and finally call this matrix subtraction with A and B. Then passing this A comma B, let's run this. Again, so the subtraction took about 0.2573 seconds on your CPU, but it took only like 0.0049 seconds on your GPU. So this is the time difference, which is like, again, there is like quite a bit of difference here. So uh, this is for single matrix, but in, in deep learning, often we work with several data points and large amount of data, right? So that this is going to be a huge thing. And matrix multiplication is a thing where we use it often and there are, there are like a lot of calculations involved in it, right? So it's not just element wise multiplication. So we take the rows and columns, do a dot product of rows of first column and the columns of uh, second column. It's like a pretty complex calculation every step, right? So that's going to take some time. So now, to do the same, I'll copy this, paste it here. So we have matrix subtraction of A comma B start time is equal to time dot time and the result CPU. So this is going to be my matrix multiplication. Again, this is not an element wise matrix multiplication, but this 
matrix multiplication that we would do with those rows and columns that we have discussed in the previous video or you can even call this as matrix dot product so i'll say this torch dot matmul which basically means matrix multiplication so this does, does matrix product of two tensors again we can call this as matrix multiplication as well like you don't have to confuse this this tensors and matrix for now so we have this torch dot matmul which is going to do our expected matrix multiplication a comma b but this is going to do this on cpu as we have not moved it to the gpu yet so torch dot matmul and then we can just say multiplication over here so matrix multiplication on cpu it's going to take this much time and then similarly gpu multiply gpu matrix multiplication so start time in time so this remains the same the only thing is result gpu is equal to torch dot matmul it should be a gpu and b gpu let me put this let's verify if we have written that correctly in the previous step so we have a gpu minus b gpu yeah okay so basically we are moving this a and b to the gpu reference point for the start time and the reference point for the end time is there so result gpu is matrix multiplication and, and doing this synchronized to make sure that all the processes on gpus are kind of completed and then gpu time is equal to end time minus start time so this would be matrix multiplication on your gpu so let's run this and again copy this paste it over here so this is again a pretty large matrix right so here instead of subtraction uh, i have to change this to so this would be my matrix multiplication i'll run this and copy this paste it over here let's see how much time this is going to take so this may take a few seconds let's wait for it and the majority of the time it's taking it it's going to be for calculating it in cpu so gpu kind of happens like pretty instantly so as you, you can also see the ram it's kind of consuming so it's this process is currently happening on the cpu so if you want to see which step it's happening instead of putting this in a function you can put it in this uh, outside the function as well so as you can see matrix multiplication for a and b on cpu took about 25 seconds but matrix multiplication on gpu took only like 0 0.8 seconds not even one second so that's the power of gpu and this is like a very simple example and we haven't like consumed like that much part of the gpu again the sole reason is that uh, gpu doesn't do this kind of like synchro it doesn't do this sequentially again cpu also doesn't do this uh that way but again it has like very lesser number of cores to work with but gpu has this thousands of cores that it can use again when it comes to this 10,000 into 10,000 matrix each core kind of does a part of this calculation so that like all these calculations are happening simultaneously in a parallel way and this is the main advantage when it comes to training a neural network where a lot of calculation and even the data data is basically matrix and tensors right so that calculations happens like pretty fast when you compare it with the cpu so i hope everyone is kind of uh, clear with this video and, and then the main reason for doing this is like uh, you know just to get an understanding of how much faster gpu calculations are and this is what happens when we kind of train a neural network on a gpu versus a cpu instance okay so that is all from my side and i hope that you have learned something from this video i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching